This is a brief introduction to existential psychotherapy. It is a frame of reference or way of looking at things rather than a unique and complete psychotherapeutic theory. Irvin Yalom, the well-known US psychiatrist and existential psychotherapist, states it is simply a way of understanding the human condition. Existentialism arose from the work of several 19th and 20th century philosophers such as Soren Kierkegaard, Friedrich Nietzsche, Simone de Beauvoir and perhaps most notably Jean-Paul Sartre. In general, existential philosophy states that there is no external authority outside the person because the subjective and perceived experience of the individual is paramount and the only truth. The core idea in existential philosophy is that the human being does exist but as nothing. The theory is that humans have no fixed self and no essence and that we live in an undetermined world that has no obvious or agreed upon meaning. Sartre philosophized that the only meaning to existence is that which we each create for ourselves moment by moment and further that we are each entirely responsible for our own individual existence. When we are born, we come into a state of being from non-being, but we can only truly feel and experience our being or aliveness in relation to and in conscious acknowledgement of our non-being or D-E-A-T-H. As YouTube can be a bit peculiar about certain words used on their platform, from now on I'm going to refer to the word D-E-A-T-H as just D. Until we have resolved issues relating to our own mortality, anxiety is never far from human consciousness because nothing is preordained. We each have the freedom and responsibility to choose our destiny and the meaning we attach to life in the knowledge of the ultimate limitation that D places on us. Existentialism describes the realities of existence that are of central concern to humans. Specifically in relation to psychotherapy, Yalom states that the four main realities or givens of existence are 1. The inevitability of D for each individual and everyone we love. 2. The absence of any obvious meaning or sense to life. 3. Each individual's freedom and responsibility for finding and giving meaning to their own life. And 4. That every single one of us is ultimately alone. Even when we are with others, we have to face arriving and leaving this world alone. Before going further, I just want to review some of the criticisms of existentialism, as you will have picked up that it is sounding a little gloomy. Indeed, some critics have argued that the philosophy is too pessimistic and not compatible with religions such as Christianity, which, amongst other things, state redemption is obtained in the afterlife. Existentialism does not theorise that anything happens after D. There is also the criticism that existentialism, in its belief that each person decides for themselves what is meaningful, lacks morality and has no conception of evil. The counterclaim from the existential community to these criticisms is that it allows for the normal and important motivating emotion of despair, the capacity to change, and the requirement for humans to take moral responsibility for themselves rather than abdicate to a superior being, which other schools of thought and religions do not. Political parties such as the Communists criticise existentialism by stating that it is too individualistic and stops people from working together. This is countered by the existentialists who state that individuals first decide their moral values and then commit to action in the community. Existentialism is, therefore, not incompatible with politics or with religion. It just refutes unthinking, blind allegiance to schools of political or religious doctrine. 
John Paul Sartre was very vocal in countering the political and religious critics, and he was adamant that a person can have political and religious beliefs and at the same time be an existentialist. Sartre himself was an atheist, but he also believed that even if God or a higher power exists, there is still the requirement for each human to imbue their life with meaning and make moral judgments, and that these are unchanging facts of life. Existentialists can get bad press, and this was especially the case at the time the theories first came into general public awareness, and the ideas were spreading to people and by people who did not fully understand the philosophy. As evidence of this, Sartre tells the story of a woman who stated, I think I'm becoming an existentialist whenever she said something negative or rude, which, according to Sartre, indicates the downgraded and ill-informed view lay people had of existentialism. Sartre argued that this view was incorrect and that real existentialism is a rational, insightful and creative theory focused on acknowledging and incorporating human freedom and responsibility. The reason why some religions and political movements are anti-existentialism is because such movements do need people to be ideologically unquestioning to some degree, and existentialism encourages people to question everything. So Sartre stated that criticisms of existentialism are often made through self-interest to preserve adherence to political and religious doctrines. Let's take the focus to how existential thought relates to psychotherapy. The existential view of emotional well-being is when a person has the ability to deal with, emotionally process and treat upsetting experiences and unpleasant feelings as an expected part of life. The opposite to this, of viewing upsets and difficulties as abnormal intruders and defensively trying to get rid of them or withdrawing into fantasy, leads to a loss of well-being and inevitable emotional shallowness and inauthenticity. According to existentialists, disruptions to life should both be expected and welcomed as the person can gain opportunities to deepen their understanding and move towards richer and more authentic emotional connection with self, others and the world. Lack of authentic emotional connection occurs when people deceive themselves because they are unable to face and accept that everyone, including themselves, have vulnerabilities and are mortal. This is known as de-anxiety. When people fear their own mortality, they have to spend a great deal of time and energy denying life's essential realities, which often leads to anxiety and depression. They have to defend themselves against the realities of existence and do so by hiding in delusions and behind a false self-image. De-anxiety is a central feature of existentialism, which states that humans are motivated to want to survive but ultimately die, and as a result of this, de-anxiety is inescapable. Well-being is achieved by the person who is able to accept, understand, contain and tolerate the unavoidable anxiety around their own mortality and accept the limitations, powerlessness and vulnerabilities that go along with this. As it can be distressing to contemplate mortality, people can develop defensive cognitive structures and maladaptive behaviours to shield themselves from the truth. So the aim of existential psychotherapy is to help people comfortably come to terms with the givens of existence so they can drop defensive and maladaptive patterns of thought and behaviour and develop more authentic and fulfilling ways of being in relationship to themselves, others and the world. Clients are encouraged to identify their own meanings and values and to become their own inner authority. By understanding and finding value and meaning in their own existence, clients can change to more authentic and rewarding living in both their inner world and the outer world of relationships with others. 
Existential psychotherapy does not pretend that clients will finish therapy as perfect and anxiety-free human beings, as there is no such thing as a perfect or anxiety-free person. Instead, the hope is that clients will finish therapy as people who are able to accept, tolerate and adapt to the difficult experiences and emotions and to the limitations that are an unavoidable part of life for everyone. Existential therapy focuses on assisting clients to describe their experiences and the therapist does not provide explanations or diagnoses but rather engages in open-minded exploration alongside clients. Particular preoccupations, themes, anxieties, self-deceptions, behavioural patterns, assumptions and values that are significant in the client's existence will emerge in therapy. The therapist needs to identify these, bringing them to the client's attention, making what is implicit explicit. The therapist, by acting as a mirror for the client, enables the client to form a clearer picture of what life means to them, of how they relate to the world, of their assumptions, values and what is important to them. It should also help identify whether the client's lifestyle is congruent with their values and whether they are taking responsibility or abdicating it to an outside source. The therapist will explore what clients are doing, what they are choosing, what they are making happen in their lives. The therapist's job is to assist the client with this investigation of their life, to identify the discrepancies, contradictions and ambiguities between clients' values and actions, so clients develop a better understanding of their processes. The therapist helps the client to identify the choices they are making, so the client gains conscious awareness and can then take responsibility for those choices and develop the capacity to make different choices when needed. The therapist will offer interpretations only in relation to what clients explicitly talk about in therapy sessions. In existential therapy, the therapist does not bring any of their own material and should ensure their own values do not impinge on client self-discovery. There is strictly no attempt on the part of the existential therapist to explain client's experience, nor to suggest solutions, nor in any way to collude to help clients feel better. In a similar way to psychodynamic psychotherapy, the existential psychotherapist helps clients understand their patterns of relating to themselves, others, the world, and to the existential givens by observing and bringing to the client's attention how they are relating to the therapist within sessions. The reason for this is that often, although not always, the patterns being enacted inside therapy can mirror what is going on for the client in the outside world. Each individual is free to engage with all the givens in any way they choose and there is limitless variation in how people do this. The individual is also free to change how they engage because the existential position is that there is no fixed or coherent self. We become who we are through our interpretation and reinterpretation of our experience over and over again throughout life. The client's experience of the therapist and of relating in new ways with the therapist can facilitate this process of positive change. I hope you have found this brief introduction to existential psychotherapy useful. If you would like to find out more, I have included a list of recommended reading for you. Thank you so much for watching and I do look forward to having your company again in my next video.